But every time he bent over, he still had a fainting spell. Finally, he went to the local neighborhood uh, candy store, which were called luncheonettes in those days, and he told Murray, the guy, what was happening, that every time he bent over to tie his shoes, he had a fainting spell, and all of the geniuses in the medical profession couldn't help him. So Murray looked at him, he said, here, let me look at you for a minute. He said, your answer is your belt is too tight. Loosen the two notches and you won't faint. Now, the, the object of that story, why I laughed at it, is so many things are practically cured in our lives, whether it's psychological or physical. I found it in my own life. Sometimes you get scared. You feel a this, you feel a that. You say, do I have a this, you have a that. And then you find out you have a little indigestion from something you ate or whatever, and it goes away. We tend to over overemphasize the littlest things, and you know sometimes the most practical, simple solution is the answer. I'm not saying all the time, you know, they tell you, oh, don't make sure you get a colonoscopy every five minutes. To make sure, so get a colonoscopy, have the kielbasa, see if I care. Let him put the kielbasa into you on the television set. I've had enough, I'm waiting for the, for the uh, virtual colonoscopy, where you swallow a camera or, you, or they do markers in your, um, <clears throat> in your waste product. I'm never going to go through the kielbasa again. I don't care if it's San Francisco and it's supposed to be pleasurable. I'm not doing it again. We'll not go through that nightmare again with the curtain and the this and the television set. And look, it's important to know because they can snip off the, the, uh, the, emerging, the, emerging, the emerging tumor. I get it. But I'll still take the, uh, the, the virtual. It's not developed yet, I don't think. Are we already short of time in the first segment of the second hour of the 14th day of the 21st year of the 19th century? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Blasting out from San Fran, sicko, Michael Savage. John on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's uh, your question or comment? Yeah, I just wanted to ask Mr. Sanders how he can justify it being a Caucasian person that um, saying that only black lives matter. Well, because, in fact, the truth is, if you read Animal Farm, you find out that uh, in Animal Farm, some animals are more equal than others. And the fact of the matter is, in order to get the vote that I need, I have to appeal to people who are racist, who scream things like this, or else they won't vote. We all know the Democrats are dying in America across the country. And the only way to get them to vote is to appeal to the worst of them. That's all. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. See, I can't do Bernie today. It's shifting between... It was... I did great Bernie's yesterday, the day before, because I was depressed, low blood sugar, had a migraine, and it worked. Today, I feel too good. I may not even be able to do radio anymore. I feel too good. It must be... I don't know what it is. I just... When I wake up and I get up for a sunrise, I mean, I'm feeling so good that I may have to see a doctor. Something is wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I do, I do feel great. It's, the, it's, the, it's that, uh, whatever, that comedian thing. I rarely get up at dawn. Usually, I get up at dawn when the light comes in the curtain. I mean, if you're interested in these things. Otherwise, I don't have to do this. The show is very personal after 21 years. I'm a member of your family. You know that. Many of you tune in. You're not tuning in for the news. You can get that yourself in three minutes on three websites. Right? So you want to hear me you rap, complain, get high, get low, talk about this, talk about that. You're enjoying hanging out with me because I'm a very captivating individual. Make believe it's Cafe Savage. I used to say this years ago. That you're coming into a cafe. I'm the cafe owner. He's the kind of cafe owner like the Patron, you know, the old days. There was always a guy who owned it. And basically, if he wasn't there, you wouldn't even go in the cafe. You didn't go for the food. You went because you liked the guy's energy. You just liked him. Even if you didn't disagree with him, you enjoyed hanging out with him. He had a certain energy. He gave off an aura. There was a name for it in different countries at different times. And it's, uh, it has different names. And the thing is, is you enjoy that. That's, those of us who are in the radio business understand that. And uh, I, I mean, welcome to Cafe Savage. That's what it's like for me today. I don't know what it is, why I feel so good. I think it's because I'm planning the show. The book's coming out. Okay. They're saying El Nino's coming. We're going to have a lot of rain. I hope so. I mean, it's been four years of a drought here in California. They got little snitches running around looking at people's uh, your sprinkler systems. Little girls from little colleges with little minds from little families. They're looking if your sprinkler is on. You hear? That's a, they're not worried about the jihadis that Obama's importing. They're worried about whether you put your sprinkler on to water your roses. That's the society we live in. So it's the fourth year of a drought. I understand it. 
But what the morons in Sacramento and Washington should understand is that California is part of a Mediterranean climate. It's been known as that Mediterranean climate for like eons. That means seven years of dry and then seven years of wet. So we're actually only halfway through the dry phase, boys and girls. That doesn't mean we shouldn't conserve. I mean, I've cut back. I only shower for 30 minutes now instead of an hour. No, I'm, I always take short showers. I'm very cognizant. I recycle water like I don't. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Now, now compared to what we have now, that's all. Well, you want some shaking, we're going to do it right now on the program. We have Bill Gertz of the Washington Times giving us new details of Chinese space weapons to really make your day. I mean, here comes the pain. Remember Al Pacino in the... Uh, in the movie Carlito's Way when he runs out of ammo in the uh, bathroom and he says the famous line, Robert, play it. Here come the pain! <laughs> well, here it comes. Bill Gertz, here come the pain. What are the Chinese doing in space, Bill? Uh, hi, Michael. Yeah, they're, uh, according to a forthcoming Congressional China Commission report, they're developing an array of space weapons, what they call counter space capabilities. They include anti-satellite missiles, uh, co-orbital uh, small satellites that can crash into and grab other satellites, as well as uh, uh, cyber operations, ground-based jammers, and directed energy weapons. So they're uh, they're gearing up for space warfare. So, Bill, do do we have countermeasures? Are we ahead of the Chinese? Are we falling behind? What's the what is the real gist of the story? Yeah, the Obama administration is totally opposed to developing any kind of space weapons like that. Oh, in other words, we That's could have figured that out. So, in other words, we, we shouldn't have space weapons because they're mean. Is that it? Space weapons are mean? Our, our missile defense, back in 2008, we were able to uh, modify one of our uh, SM-3 anti-missile uh, missiles, and it shot down a falling satellite. That was kind of a, a demonstration that if we wanted to, we could do it, but it won't happen under under this crowd. Holy God. So they're letting China now get ahead of us in space, tech, space weapons technology? How much more can this man do to the military to the point where up the point of no return, Bill? You're an expert on this. Is this something that someone can reverse? It, it, let's say Donald Trump wins. Let's say I'm for it, but let's say he wins and he wants to go back to when America was really a great nation and capable of not only defending itself but asserting itself. Can this be reversed? Uh, it'll take at least a decade. It's a crisis now for the military. They've cut the budget by a, a trillion dollars uh, under Obama, and the military right now is stretched to the breaking point. They literally don't have enough money to do the basic requirements that they need to do, much less develop new weapons, which they need to replace the old ones, which were built built up during the Reagan administration and now need to be replaced. Uh, yeah, I call it a, a, a military crisis right now at the Pentagon. I, I was at the Pentagon today, and, uh, you know, I, t I talked to some people there, and privately they'll tell you that uh, the morale there is very low. Well, isn't that what Obama wants? For China to knock our satellites out of the sky. I know you, you're not, not going to comment, but I've, I've come through the wormhole on this. This man is out to decimate the military. He's decapitated the leadership. Now we find out that they're ahead of us in, in space weapons, and we've not only fallen behind, but he's not de developing any new weapons. Well, what the heck is going on, Bill? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, he, he uh, has his agenda, and his agenda is to spend money on domestic programs and... Uh, uh, his policy in Afghanistan is an utter failure. You know, uh, six years ago he said the goal was to constrain al-Qaeda, uh, reverse the Taliban momentum, and help the Afghan forces. And today he announced that we have to leave our troops there because uh, he's failed, basically. Right. That was quite a turnaround. And how's he spinning the leaving troops in Afghanistan? He's Mr. Anti-War. How does he justify that? Well, I think he's got kind of a, uh, a, a compliant uh, news media that's not giving him a hard time. If you look at all the headlines on the story, uh, it, it's not portrayed as a reversal of his decision. He would oh. plan to pull all the troops out by the end of the year, and now, uh, now he's leaving them in through next year, and then probably uh, 5,500 troops will be there forever. Now, what about this story? Special Ops' new Afghan site was a hospital. What the heck is that about, Bill? 
Uh, this is part of an ongoing Pentagon investigation. There's three theories as, as to what happened with this uh, Doctors Without Borders hospital. Uh, one theory is that uh, it was a Taliban deception operation designed to force us to attack a hospital, create civilian casualties. Mm. Uh, the other is it could have been a uh, insider in the Afghan military. We've had problems with that. They might have directed uh, U.S. fire on the hospital. And then the oh. third theory, which is most the leading one, is that it was just a lack of communications, that uh, they saw some Taliban go into this hospital, and then they called in air support, and uh, uh, the people who did the firing didn't know it was a hospital. But we have to wait and see for the final results. Obama's already apologized. He didn't even wait for the uh, for the results of the investigation to come out. We're speaking with Bill Gartz of the Washington Times. The I mean, you're the best, you know, military defense department reporter in the country, and you've been on this beat for a very long time, Bill. Uh, what is the? You say the morale is very low in the Pentagon. Behind the scenes, you go in there. Are there still? Is there still a command structure left? that could take on an enemy? I, I'm asking a crazy question, I know that. Sure. I get the feeling that he's so he has so decapitated military leadership, I don't know if we can take on an enemy anywhere. Is that uh, overplaying it or what? I mean, what, what exists there in the Pentagon anymore? They'll have enormous military power. What we lack is, is uh, leadership. Uh, as you mentioned, he's really kind of gone after all the warrior-type leaders now. He's doing social engineering. He wants to put uh, women in frontline combat positions. Uh, the priority is to integrate transgenders into the military. Again, this is all designed to weaken U.S. forces. And, of course, from, from the president and his advisor's standpoint, they think this is a good thing, when, in fact, it really has the impact of weakening our military forces. But that's common sense that it would weaken the military forces. Are these? Here's the real question, Bill. Common sense would dictate what you just said. All those changes do weaken the military. On what basis do they continue to push this insanity then? Simply because this is something they did in their private lives in the universities or when they were public officials somewhere else and they got the kudos for it? They don't understand the military is a different place? Yeah, it's political correctness. The military is essentially a conservative organization with, with a strong values, strong uh, tradition of patriotism, and uh, the president doesn't like that. He's a, he's a world citizen. He, he believes in the, the United Nations uh, should lead the world, and uh, so he, he has been neglectful of uh, our military capabilities. But, Bill, we live in a nation of laws. He is not a law unto himself. He is a radical, anti-American, anti-military crackpot. How is it that he is able to do this to the military and to decapitate the military without any fighting back from Congress, Bill? That's a, that's a really good question, and I don't know the answer. I know that Congress really needs to step up to the plate. They are a co-equal branch of government, and they have not done their job. They've stood by... Well, these things have taken place. Uh, the, the, the most damaging thing is this Budget Control Act, uh, the so-called sequester, which is uh, leading to sharp budget cuts. Uh, wh whoever in Congress agreed to that uh, should be held accountable for that because of the damage that that has done to the, to the entire budgeting process and the ability to maintain a strong military. Bill Gertz, Washington Times, the best, the best in the business. Bill, thanks for being with us on The Savage Nation. Thank you. Just unbelievable reportage. You know, I haven't had Bill on the show in many years. I used to have him on regularly when I was a local host. And uh, Bill, it really is on the, he's an insider. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really look for his work as it comes up. And he didn't tell me, by the way, uh, about the satellites, all new. But in terms of gutting the military, it's really not new, news to me. And I, I don't want to beat it to death. But in my chapter on zero military, I write, We've gone from soldiers to social workers, supporting our enemies, alienating our allies. Where is our warrior king and the Vikings' fate in, in the book Government Zero? So it's not new to me. I know this man is a very dangerous man. I know he's a maniac. I know he's mentally unstable. I know he's a dictator. And I know that there's no opposition, with the exception of a few voices here and there. And then when you watch the Democrat debate the other night, they're talking in a in a petri dish, in, a, in, a, in, in their own world. 
there was almost no discussion. What almost with Anderson Cooper as the as the as the host of the show? 